a lot of schools are cafeterias. Mm -hmm. And so you, um, you go through and you pick this and you mm -hmm. pick that. And I'll be very uh, frank here. Uh, putting people who don't know anything in charge of their own education is a bad <laughs> Yeah. You pick your courses based off what you want to learn. Yeah. It's not a good idea if you don't know what you need to learn. Uh, That's exactly right. And so we have prospective students and they come uh, from all kinds of backgrounds and from all over the globe, uh, language groups, uh, you know, all, ki all kinds of uh, language groups. And uh, it's always great to, uh, you know, meet with prospective students and, and hear their questions. Uh, but what's interesting to me is uh, to contrast the kinds of questions that students are asking in their prospective student meetings uh, with the kinds of questions they're asking two or three years into their education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're completely different. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, and it's because uh, their uh, thinking and their understanding has been revolutionized mm -hmm. by engaging with Scripture in the original languages and, and deeply and seriously and engaging with uh, the most important literature in, in the history of the Christian tradition, at least some of it, and uh, engaging with uh, the most important uh, contemporary uh, literature. Um, so uh, um, when students start their education, most of the time uh, they don't know even exactly what the questions are. So then to put them in charge of, you know, to leave them to choose their own curriculum uh, or to attend a seminary where, you know, this prof is an Arminian and this prof, this prof is a, a Calvinist, whatever somebody means by that. And uh, this prof is a, a Lutheran and this mm -hmm. prof is a Baptist, uh, you know, the cafeteria approach to education. There is mm -hmm. some value in that. But what I've seen over the years, and I've, you know, I've been at this now for 25, 26 years, and I taught at the undergraduate level for a couple of years before I came here. And um, what I've seen uh, in the difference I see is that uh, we have students who are um, well informed about the range of opinions, mm -hmm. but they themselves end up somewhat latitudinarian and, mm. and uh, w without settled convictions yeah. on some of the most important questions in the faith. Yep. And um, that seems like a, a poor stance from which to do pastoral ministry. Mm. So, and I'm, so I'm not saying that there isn't any value in that. And sure. we, we certainly do try, uh, do our very best uh, to expose students to a wide, a wide variety, a wide range of points of view, and we're duty bound by the moral law and by conviction to represent the various points of view as accurately as we can, so that we can engage them well, carefully, thoroughly, and so forth. So it's not as if students won't be engaging those things, but they'll be engaging them from a particular uh, a confession from mm -hmm. a particular mm -hmm. tradition. And um, so I think there's a lot of value. And even those students who graduate not agreeing with us yeah. said many times that they're glad that they went to a school that actually uh, believes. <laughs> believes something. <laughs> yeah. And and, and, uh, st and stands for something, a school that has convictions, that's gracious about their convictions, but that actually has convictions. 